Good morning. This is 31405 Backman model. SR Lord Nelson class of Walter Raleigh. 30852. They made 16 of these in real life, of which only one survives. And the only survivor is Lord Nelson. Now what I've done is I've made a few alterations to this. I ground out the top of the coal here and put some Bug H Master coal in it. I've put a crew in it. I've done some detailing to inside the foot plate, which you will see in a second. And it's superb. The only thing with it is it's got a larger decoupling on it, which isn't difficult. And the push rods here are slightly larger than on the newer locomotives. Now I've seen a lot of negative opinions about these Backman split chassis locomotives and I've no doubt they do appear to be difficult to convert to DCC. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not converting any of my old locos to DCC. If I want a DCC loco I'll buy one. Anyway, people say they don't run well. Now, people have got to judge for themselves, but are these people buying locos that are 10, 15, 20 years old that are knackered? My experience of second-hand locomotives off eBay, they've been knackered. Beedham Backman, Hornby, they've been knackered. I've sent a lot of my second-hand ones back. So I just put, are people just buying second-hand rubbish, that people are, other people's rubbish, and they're saying there's something wrong with them. Now, I've had this three years. I cycle them round. I've never had a problem with it. The only thing I will say is, Maybe it's just a tad more agricultural than the newer locos. And I'm being picky here. It doesn't have any pickups in the tender, which is at the end of the world. You've got to judge for yourselves. However, my opinion, I wouldn't buy a second-hand one of these. I would second-hand anything that's old, unless it's brand new in the box, never been run, and even then you're taking a risk because things deteriorate over time. If they've been kept in an airtight environment, the oil dries out, dries out in them. That's not always a good idea either. Anyway, you've got to spend your money and take your choice. Thank you for watching. We are inside of Sir Walter Raleigh, and you can see I've used a really thin brush and a cocktail stick to give some life to the embossed controls in the foot plate, and I've put a couple of crew in. Thank you. Right, here's the uh, radius two curves test, and this is tight. This is very, 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 very tight. Very, very tight. Again, if they weren't dead flat, it would come off. Slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. And then, if you can see, it's very tight, and you can tell it's tight. Because when we do it slowly on minimum power, it stops. And bring it back slowly again. And this is why I wouldn't recommend this. You can have it going through slowly. Slow it, slow it, slow it right down, slow it right down. And you will see, because it's tight, it stops. And you can see the tender lift slightly. You can just see it lift. This is far too tight. And this was a computer program that said this would be okay. And you can see we're, because it's so very, very tight, we're having to feed more power on. We can't let it just run round like we could the smaller locos or the diesels. And take it out again slowly, really slowly, really slowly. And you will see that it's, you can see how tight it is. And you can see we're having to put more power on. And this is showing you why with curved points you've got to be careful. And to have three in a row with no gap, radius two. And this is why I say with these computer programs. But the loco did it. The loco did it and it's been fine. Thank you for watching. Okay, here's Lord Nelson doing the sidings test. Through streamlined points and we bring it back at normal running and you can see 
no issues at all. Absolutely perfect. And we bring it back. And these are all Pico Insul Frog points. And this Loco has no pickups in the tender. Okay, we're going to run it a little bit slower now. This is really stupid slow, a bit faster actually, otherwise it's going to stop. And it's going over Pico Insul Frog points. And we bring it back. And this is stupid slow. We bring it out again. And as I say, it's stupid slow, stupid slow. But I'm really putting this through its paces because they get slagged off so much. But as I said, I would not have a problem buying a second hand new one of these. But like every second hand locomotive I've bought, I've had to send them back. Thank you for watching this, thank you. And here we are at City Slow Speeds. You can see there's no real issues with that. Thank you for watching. This is the tightest part of my track, a radius 2 curve point onto a radius 2, which I wouldn't recommend, but it's done it easy. And here we are, we've slowed it right down, now this locomotive, onto this awful piece of track, I have to be honest. But it's done it easily enough. And you can see these Batman locomotives with the split chassis that aren't supposed to run that well. Well, what can I say?
from Sawalta. And we're pulling eight Hornby carriages here. Country Express. And you can hear the effect of cork ballast on cork. And I'm running this low cohort, well I would say I'll slow it well, what you're running at. And it's really, really nice. And here we are, here's Sir Walter Raleigh, panoramic view, hope you've enjoyed seeing it run, and thank you for watching.